how you guys welcome back to my channel how's everyone doing um it's been a while since i done since i've done my last like sit down talking video and if you know me you know that a lot has changed for me in this whole year but my youtube family doesn't know like a lot of things that have taken place um so i wanted to come to you today and talk about why i quit my job i quit my job in march of this year and you're probably like what like you quit your job like what was the plan what was this year your girl went jobless you know what i'm saying so let's rewind back to like the beginning of the year so the beginning of the year i traveled to dallas texas for a job interview and i went out there it was like january 11th so it was like fresh off the beginning of the year um i had an interview with a company that was um with ups because back here in north carolina that's who i work for i worked for ups i've been in logis the logistics industry for like almost five years um, of experience. So here in North Carolina, I was an assistant manager at a UPS store. Um, and so I was like, okay, this is a logistics position. This is a higher, more corporate position. I should be able to get this. I come with experience, you know? So I flew out there, me and my boyfriend, we flew to Dallas um, for the interview. I paid for my own money to um i paid for my own money for the flight and for his flight too he paid um you know so it was on our own expenses to go out there and i felt like god had led me out there for this opportunity because it was like it was like boom bam boom like when i applied for the job i applied for the job and then the recruiter contacted me within a few minutes of applying she was super interested in me super interested in all the qualifications and you know experience that i had in the logistics industry and she was like i think you'd be a great fit you know so you know we set up an interview and all that stuff so in my mind i'm thinking like i got this job you know what i'm saying i got this my with dallas like i had already felt in my spirit that god told me to move out there and this was gonna be it so um i got there for the interview i feel like the interview went good you know but Two days later, after coming back from Dallas, I got a um, notice from the recruiter and she was like, you know, um, we thank you for coming out here. I really loved everything about you, but the hiring managers felt like you didn't show enough personality. And I'm like, hmm, me, Brittany, not show enough personality. Like, I actually recall being in the interview, you know, thinking like, you know, I'm giving them personality, I'm giving them scenarios when they ask for stuff, you know, I'm being detailed about things, not too detailed, but just enough, you know, to feel like you're not like bland or like just giving them short answers. So I was just like, I don't understand like how I could go out there, fly that far um, and not get the job, you know, and I felt like I was led. So it like crushed my spirit and I was like, God, I don't understand. I don't understand why you would have me go and be that embarrassed to tell people like, oh, I'm going to Dallas, you know, for an interview and feel like I'm going to get it, you know, and like actually want the job, you know, because I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit, you know, so there have been times where I'm like, okay, I don't want to get a job. I want to go after my own thing. You know but i'm not opposed to working for anybody it's just i have preferences just like anybody i feel like you know you may have a preference to work from home you may have a preference to you know work part-time or you may have a preference to work in an office or travel with your job you know there's preferences of work i'm not opposed to working for anybody it's just you know maybe what i'm doing i like to like what i'm doing at least you know so all of that happened like the first week in January. So I was like, God, like what in the world? You know, so my boyfriend, he didn't understand. My mom didn't understand. My, you know, friends didn't understand. Nobody understood like what happened and why God sent me out there. And to this day, I'm still trying to figure out like why God sent me there um, for me not to get the job and for him to put in my spirit so heavily that Brittany, you're supposed to be in Dallas, you know, but you know, I'm still praying on that thing and I'm like, okay, we're going to see 
what 2020 holds but okay so that was week one of january 2019 all right so back further i have always prayed to like want to, to be able to quit my job you know to be an entrepreneur to be able to be secure in entrepreneurship and you know to to just be able to just be secure in entrepreneurship and you know like i said be able to quit my job so it's been a, a desire of mine for years and i've always prayed to god to let me know what is it specifically that you want me to do so that i can be secure you know what i'm saying so i've always had that in my mind even though you know i worked um, for UP for the UPS store and I worked 40 hours a week. I was full-time even though I didn't always get full-time hours like my hours would go like Up and down each week, you know, like I would have maybe 31 week 41 week or you know I might be working Monday through Friday one week. I might be working Monday through Saturday You know that type of schedule, you know, not even the same hours each day each week so it wasn't stable in the sense of okay you you know when you're working you know that when you're not working you can kind of you know work on your entrepreneurship endeavors and you know do creative things mind you i worked at eps store so it was physical and it was mental and i was the assistant manager so a lot of the issues that would pop up i was the person to go to um and so it was very draining when i got off work and it would not make me want to be in the mood to create anything, creating videos, to even look cute, to get on camera. You're not to say that you got to look cute to get on camera, but hey, his YouTube. But, um, you know, just I just didn't feel like doing those things when I got off work. And in the weekend, I didn't feel like really being creative. Sometimes I did, sometimes I didn't. It was just a fluctuation of things and it wasn't consistent for me. So I was just like very drained in my spirit too because the UPS industry wasn't something that I loved. It was just something that I was good at and that I had done for years and I knew how to do. And a lot of people liked the experience that I had, you know, so because when I came to the job um, in, let's see, I came to that job in October of 2016 and I came straight in as an assistant manager um, the store owner, he loved, you know, like the experience that I had and everything. So, but I, the one thing I did love about my job was that my boss was not always there. I don't like a boss that is always micromanaging you and always like just right there. I, I don't like that. So that was a good thing. You know, me and my friend, um, we would work together and we basically ran the store. Like, so it was like going to work every day with your friend you know, and y'all taking care of things, you know, even though it was work. So it wasn't bad at the beginning. Um, but you know, things started to change. I was there, um, two and a half years before my current owner, he sold the store and we got new owners. So, okay. New owners. That's when everything changed. Okay. You know, so two and a half years in store owner tells me I'm selling the store. You know, it's a husband and a wife. They're taking over the store. They're also bringing their nephew and their brother-in-law. So it's like a family thing. You know, most UPS stores are family owned, you know, um, but this was like a lot of family. So I was okay with the change, you know, at that point in time too, my friend that I had always worked with up until those two and a half years, she had left and got another job. Um, some of the employees that were there for a while had left as well. So basically a lot had changed and we were getting like new people. I was having to train those people because I had been there, you know, I'm the one that's been there the longest and I also know a lot. So I have to train the new people, the new owners, mind you, they didn't come with any type of like logistics experience or UPS industry, FedEx, none of that type of experience. So I had to basically school them as well on things that they needed help on, like, cause per store is different. So, um, mind you, another thing, I had been at the UPS store for two and a half years without a raise. I came in with a great pay being a UPS assistant manager, um, but I never got a raise. You know, while I was there, it didn't really bother me too much you know, being that I, I was there and, and I wasn't like living off like this big coin of money working for UPS. Mind you, this is the UPS store, not the UPS. So 
they're not the same UPS stores are individually owned and UPS is you know like a corporation but they are connected so you don't get all the benefits and all that stuff you work hourly a lot of times it's not very high pay but I came in with the higher pay than a lot of people would get because like I said the experience so I wasn't complaining about not getting paid more you know, I, I was still kind of living that kind of check to check type life, you know, but I was able to manage, you know, I had my own place. Um, I was able to, you know, do a little shopping here and there, you know, still be me um, and, and enjoy life and, you know, and be able to get to work and stuff like that, pay my bills. But it wasn't a lot to be able to like, OK, I want to go travel. I want to go do the things I want to do. It wasn't like that. You know, it was just enough to get by, basically, in Raleigh. Um, but, yeah, so, mind you, like I said, I've been there two and a half years with no raise, okay? So, as the new owners are coming, I'm like, okay, I need a raise because I'm doing a lot more than when I first started. I'm training people. I even created a training book, you know, for the new owners to go by to help things be smoother. Um, I was just taking up a lot more responsibility, and they agreed to that, um, to give me a raise and I got it and I was happy with it. You know, okay, so mind you, in the store, the husband and the wife did not work in the store, but the brother-in-law and the nephew did. I got along with the nephew. He was around my age, you know, I'm 30, so, you know, we were kind of cool, you know, we could talk and stuff like that and be cool. But their brother-in-law, he was older. He, I think he was probably like in his 50s, maybe 60s, I don't know. But it wasn't about age, you know, it was about personality. He had a very super micromanaging type personality. And it was like, I could move here and he would be right there. I could do this and he'd be like, what you doing? You know, or, you know, just things like that that irritated me because mind you, we're in a little store. So whoever you work with, you have to be cool with them. You have to be able to put up with them for eight hours or sometimes I worked 11 hours a day and it could be very long days to be there with somebody that you cannot put up with. It's not like I could go to my office or anything like that. Or it's like a big Walmart store or something like that where we could go in a section. I'm over here and you're over here. We're in a little UPS store. If you've ever been to one, you know. So it was very irritating to my spirit to have to go to work every day and deal with this because he was there every day. He was the type of person that... He was not going to miss work for anything, which he shouldn't, you know, but it was just like a obsessive, I got to be there from open to close type thing. I can't even let Brittany be there for two hours or three hours by herself like she's used to doing. Mind you, I used to be at the store a lot of times by myself, running the store, opening the store for, you know, three or four hours at a time by myself, you know, or closing the store. So I'm used to, I'm used to being by myself, this type of person I am. I like working by myself or with minimal people. So we butted heads, you know, and I was trying to, you know, get around that or whatever. But as work went on, I would go to work and I would feel very drained. And with me, I show my emotions on my face. So it would show that I was like depressed or like sad or just didn't really necessarily want to be there. But I still did my job. You know, I still um handled customers i still was nice to customers you know but when it came to the employees that i worked with my, my co-workers it was just a drain mainly that one co-worker and so like yes it did show on my face like i said but i still did my job and i did my job well so um the few a few months later after working for them it was probably i was probably only working with the new owners probably like three months or whatever they started no, they started in November of 2018 and I worked with them um, for a few months until March. March came and I just felt it in my spirit that something was about to happen and it did. Um, the store owner, which was the wife, because uh, the wife and the husband, like I said, they were the store owners. She presented me with a packet to demote me with a $5 decrease five dollars five dollars decrease not increase but decrease you know and so i was like i don't understand like 
how I could get a decrease. And the decrease was what a person would come into the UPS store earning if they had never had any experience at all, okay, with the high school diploma. So it was like a slap in the face for one because I had a lot of experience. Two, I even helped them out personally with this store, you know, letting them know certain things, <clears throat> teaching them, teaching the um, my manager who was the micromanager, teaching the nephew, you know, just taking up roles when they hired new people um, to help train them, you know. So it was a real slap in the face, you know, despite my my emotions that I felt, I still did my job. Like I said, it wasn't like I felt emotions and I wouldn't do my job. It was just that, you know, Brittany's a little emotional, which, you know, I'm pretty sure they didn't like that. And I, and I hate that I did feel that way. And I hate that I showed those emotions, but it wasn't like, like I said, it wasn't like I didn't do my job. So they also gave me an evaluation in different areas. In every area, I received a one. A number one one I was like are you serious are you really serious like I have helped y'all a lot and y'all want to decrease my pay five dollars I want to decrease my pay five dollars and give me an evaluation of a one in every category out of a five I was like you know what I quit I quit on the spot because what they were doing, they were giving me an opportunity to quit because they knew that I was not going to take a $5 decrease. And to see that my evaluations were ones in every category, knowing how well I do my job. And it was like, okay, we need to get her out of here because, yes, I was getting paid a lot for a UPS assistant manager. Um, and most UPS stores do not pay their employees what I was getting paid. So I get it. I get it that you want to knock me off the board because you don't want to have to pay somebody that much money or whatever. And you'd rather pay your your um, family member that much money if you're going to pay somebody that amount of money. So I get it from a family standpoint. I get it from a manager standpoint. But at the same time, the way you did it was super wrong. And so I was like, okay, it's my time to go. It's time to jump. It's time to make this this jump that I've been so scared to do. And I did it on the spot. It was like closing time. We would close at 7 o'clock. So they presented this to me at around like 6.30. And we were closing the store. And I just like got my stuff. Said my goodbyes to everybody. And you know left. Because I just felt like they weren't going to probably keep me on much longer anyway. You know. And it was just my time. And after walking out of the store I was like oh my god what just happened like did I really just quit my job like I don't have no job I don't have a plan mind you I didn't have no money saved up you know I don't didn't have a savings or whatever at that time I did have one more check coming in that was over a thousand dollars um so that was just a little bit of money coming in you know enough to like give me some cushion because I quit my job um mind you um, I had moved in with my boyfriend probably five months prior um, just to kind of like save money which I never did and to like just give me like a, a breather because like I said I was kind of living that check to check life um, with just a little money to spare and to do things um, but yeah I had moved in with him you know so I didn't have rent to pay you know like and I didn't have like these big huge bills out here to pay but at the same time I still had no plan I still didn't know what I was gonna do and I'm very thankful for him you know being that rock and being that support for me um, in advance you know not knowing that this was gonna happen so this happened on March 18th my birthday was in two days March 20th I was turning 30 years old and I'm like okay God I surrender I see you're doing like a new thing. It's very liberating. Like it's a new transition. It's about to be a new decade of my life. And, and you're taking me into the, this new journey, you know? So, you know, initially I was like, yes, like I quit my job. I finally did it. It was like a big weight lifted off of me, you know, like 
I just felt free because when I would go to work, I, I felt like I was in a cage, like a literal cage. Even though we had windows, I could see out, I could see cars going by, people going by shopping and stuff like that. I felt like I was in a cage and I could not get out because, I mean, I know you had to go to work from whatever time, whatever time you work, but it just be feeling like cages to me and I can't, like, you know, not to say I can't, but it's just like, ugh, like, it was, it's just draining, you know, because I like to be out and I like to do my own thing, you know, but I also want to make money. So mind you, like I said, it was my birthday in two days. I was turning 30 um, on March 20th and I had a good birthday and it was just like, okay, what's next? Like, what's the plan? Like this little over a thousand dollars is not going to last forever. Like we got to make some money. 